All right, guys, so we're on Exodus 2. Exodus 2. So, Israel, Jacob, Joseph, they're pretty much all dead. So, since Joseph brought the Jews, the Israelis, he brought them to the land of Pharaoh. But the Pharaoh died, a new Pharaoh came. But he doesn't know. Like, it's like when you have a business and somebody new comes in. They're pretty much going to bring in their own people. You know, I have experience with that working in construction. Where if a new guy comes in to run the show, he's going to bring in guys that are going to listen to him. You know, guys that he hires. Those are guys that are going to have show appreciation towards him. So I came up with the rule. If any Hebrew woman, any woman from, you know, the line of the line of Joseph, the line of, you know, God's chosen people, any Hebrew woman has a son, they're going to kill the son. So a lot of these Hebrew women or the, the women who are like nurses, they're like the ones that, the, the, the midwives, they're sending the children down the river. So part two, <clears throat> chapter two, Genesis. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took to a wife a daughter of Levi. So Moses is from the house of Levi. And the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could not longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein and she laid it in the flags by the river's bank and his sister stood afar off to wit what to wit what would be done to him like to wait to see what was going to happen and the daughter of pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river and her maidens walked along by the river's side and when she saw the ark among the flags she sent her maid to fetch it so the daughter of pharaoh and when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Because, like, she knows what's going on, you know. Like, okay, they're getting, rid of the they're getting rid of the children because of the rule that the Pharaoh made up, her father, pretty much. And then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? Like, you know, that's a, I guess because you're, that's a Hebrew kid. So only maybe, I don't know, kind of silly. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, take this child away and nurse it for me. And I will give thee wages. So the mom ended up getting back her son because the daughter was kind of trying to figure out, you know, where her little brother was going. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter. And he became her son. She called his name Moses. And she said, Because I drew him out of the water. And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens. And he spied an Egyptian smiting a Hebrew, one of his brethren. So he would go watch his brethren of the Hebrews and see how they were being mistreated. And he spied an Egyptian beating up a Hebrew, one of his brethren. And he looked this way and that way. And when he saw that there was no man, he killed the Egyptian. It's like you see your brother getting beat to death and he ends up defending him. And he hid in the sand. And when he went out to the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. And he said to him that did the wrong. Wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? And when he went out to the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. And he said to him that did the wrong. So he said to Moses, Wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? <laughs> And he said, Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? And intendest thou to kill me as thou killest the Egyptian? So we saw like two of his own fighting. He tried to step in and said, Are you going to kill me like you killed the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. He's like, Oh shit, they know that I, what I did. Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. So Pharaoh found out he wanted to kill Moses. Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian. So Moses booked it, and he sat down by a well. Now the priests of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water, and filled the troughs to water their, wa their father's flock. 
And the shepherds came and drove them away, but Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. So Moses protected them from like the men who were being kind of fucked up. And when they came to rule their father, he said, How is it that you are come so soon today? And they said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hands of the shepherds and also drew water enough for us. So usually they take forever, but he's like, How'd you guys do it so quickly? And he said unto his daughters, And where is he? Why is it that ye have left the man? Call him that he may eat bread. So they go get him. So that way he could uh, kind of like give him thanks for what he did for you. And Moses was content to dwell with the man. And he gave Moses Zipporah, his daughter. And she bore him a son. And he called his name Gershom. For he said, I have been a stranger in a strange land. And it came to pass in process of time that the king of Egypt died. And the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage. So they're still like fucking under bondage. And they cried and their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. So God heard their cry. And God heard their groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham. So they're giving God credit. So God had heard their, their cry. But he remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel. And God had respect unto them. May God remember them. So remember, they still might have been under slavery in real life. You know, Jesus might have actually been a real person, right? But when they talk about like, like, you know, they're kind of leaning you up to the idea that they're going to be free. So there might have been talks. Obviously, they have their own leaders amongst the Hebrews, the Israels, the Israelites that are being, you know, dealt harshly with by the Egyptians. You know, because they're trying to be kept down because they're multiplying so much in a land that isn't theirs, right? So the idea that God heard the sighs from Israel by reason of bondage and their cry came up unto God by reason of bondage because of how, you know, they're just like slaves and stuff. So they're giving this credit to a God they believe in, right? That was taught to them by the leaders of their people, you know, saying that, you know, this is, this is the... God that our forefathers believed in, you know, Abr Abram, Isaac, and Jacob, which is Israel. And so the idea that there were, this is a really a, 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 a people that was in bondage. I mean, look around, look at history, you know, humans enslave other humans, you know, and they keep them down when they find them growing powerful. So all that's true. And so let's look at it from that point of view as it correlates to their belief in a God. Right?